Best of all, the concept uses standard materials and construction techniques that engineers and precasters work with every day. The materials are simply used for applications that are new, exciting, and highly beneficial. We've got to remove the fear from, and the risk uh, from using this product. To do that, I think we have to pull together you know, good information that teaches people how to do it properly, and that's very important. If we, if we don't pull that information together, it's not going to happen. The reason that state departments of transportation are going to select and specify pre-stress, pre-cast concrete paving applications is because they have traffic situations that demand and justify that increased initial cost. And the cost is going to be justified on the basis of reduced lane closure time and longer life pavement. Judging true costs is difficult in the prototype stage as the projects are small and the learning curve has an expense. Costs are higher as processes are tried for the first time. But everyone agrees that the somewhat higher initial cost will decrease quickly and the true value of this system will be seen in the decreased life cycle benefits. Initial projects will always cost more but us in FHWA take a long view and the state DOTs also take a long view that over a period of time some of these costs are going to come down as more and more projects are built and the concerns or uncertainties uh, start disappearing. Based on two already completed projects, officials at the Federal Highway Administration see great potential for this system. The Federal Highway Administration has been very pleased with the response of the states to the first uh, five implementation projects that are now either completed or underway. And our reaction to that is to, uh, has been to provide additional funding for perhaps up to 10 additional state demonstration projects that we believe will continue this uh, application success through the next four year period. The first project took place in Georgetown, Texas in 2001. It involved installing approximately 2,300 lineal feet of frontage road pavement along Interstate 35. The panels were approximately 36 feet wide, 10 feet long, and 8 inches thick. Prior to installing the panels, a 2-inch asphalt leveling course was placed. This was followed by the polyethylene sheet. As the panels were lowered into place, epoxy was applied to the shear keys to provide a watertight seal. Once in place, the panels were mated to ensure a smooth surface. The panels were then snugged together, and at this point they can be driven over by traffic. This capability allows one section to be placed one night while another section is post-tensioned. This greatly expands the amount of roadway that can be completed in a short amount of time while taking no lanes out of use during the day. Once each section of panels was installed, strands were fed through the central stressing pockets in opposite directions. After the strands were anchored, they were tensioned from the central stressing pocket. Once the tensioning was completed, the pockets were patched. Following the completion of the Texas project, another project was designed and installed in El Monte, California. This project featured a two-lane and shoulder addition to Interstate 10 between Meeker on the east and Tyler on the west. It was completed in April 2004. Although it followed the concept created in the Texas project, several key improvements were made. First, the panels were set on a lean concrete base at the site. To enhance the weather-tight fit of the panels, foam gaskets were installed around the strand ducts in each panel. Also, the strands were epoxy-coated and pre-cut to the approximate length to provide faster installation and even more corrosion protection. Perhaps the biggest change was the use of variable thickness precast panels, which accommodated a change in pavement cross slope between the traffic lanes and the shoulder. This further demonstrates the flexibility of the concept. Installation of the precast, pre-stressed panels was also limited to nighttime construction between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Finally, the pavement surface was diamond ground in some areas. This was done to meet pavement smoothness specifications set by Caltrans, 
even though the original surface was smooth enough to be used for traffic. These adaptations show the flexibility that the system provides, even within this one type of use. But the full extent of the ways that precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement panels can be used in highway and related projects have yet to be realized. Indeed, more projects already underway throughout the Midwest will expand the panel's uses and show more capabilities. We believe that, that as the State Departments of Transportation begin to look at this new technology, they themselves will find applications that we haven't even thought about. For example, opening windows of uh, construction during time periods when weather would prohibit the traditional paving techniques. That's going to be an extremely important application uh, for the new technology. In Missouri, for instance, an entirely different application is planned. One significant change from the designs in California and, and Texas is that we're putting the post-tensioning pockets at the end of the post-tension segments rather than in the central stressing panel. Another project is planned for Texas in 2006. It will use precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement for the installation of a weigh-in-motion site. In Iowa, the pavement panels will be used for the approaches to bridges as a solution for rapid reconstruction of shattered approach slabs. Officials in Indiana also will utilize precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement panels to increase clearance beneath a bridge underpass. This range of techniques, from the same basic precast concrete concept, indicates that the applications for these products are still expanding, and DOTs are learning from each new project. What made us comfortable with really going through with it was seeing that it had been successfully constructed in California and Texas, and hopefully that whole impetus will snowball and, and then other states will also look to us, uh, you know, assuming that, that we are successful in placing it too. It does take time to prepare specifications, drawings, and to educate the DOTs and contractors with regard to what's necessary to build one of these projects. But we think that within the next four-year time window, it's going to begin to uh, take off on its own. All of these uses for precast panels create benefits that include speed and the ability to keep lanes open during the day, even during construction periods, durability that allows roadways to handle heavier truckloads and more traffic volume throughout a longer service life, thinner slabs that provide more durability for in-kind replacements and greater clearances, a longer construction season, the use of existing materials and technologies, and the highly controlled quality of precast concrete to create a long life concrete pavement requiring minimal repair cycles. These benefits create long term cost savings due to lower maintenance costs for labor and material, safer working conditions and fewer lost hours of user time. I don't think there's any limitation on the uses for precast panels uh, anywhere where someone would consider using uh, cast in place concrete. Quite honestly, it's a win-win. It's a win for the producers. It's a win for the public because they're going to get the best roads that there are. They're going to get it for the, the most economical long-term costs and they're going to have the benefit of not sitting in traffic like you would with any other system. The precast concrete industry, through the pre-stressed concrete institute and its large number of quality certified plants, will enthusiastically assist in the further development of this technology. For more information on precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement panels, contact any of these agencies or companies. Their contact information is provided on the label accompanying this presentation.